having to do with reproductive health and reproductive justice. So in the process of um, researching that film, someone told me, suggested that I really visit the hospital, which is known as a baby factory in Manila, because, uh, you know, well, obviously why, right? So she, she goes, just visit the hospital. When I visited the hospital, it was so evident to me that my film was there. I mean, that I didn't have to look anywhere else. It would still deal with all the issues um, and themes that I wanted to tackle, right? So that's, that's how it came to be. I completely changed the film, actually. Yeah, and that's what happens, right? You just knew it was you knew it was there. Yeah. I love the fact that it's this very observational documentary. You don't have any interviews or any talk, speaking with experts, and and it's it worked so well. Was this a, is that how you plan to do it? Uh, for sure. Mm. I, I just wanted to give the audience the same experience I had visiting the hospital because I was just I felt like I was dropped in this other world and I had to figure out what is happening here. You know, it's this sort of organized chaos, but things work, right? Mm -hmm. Once you stay long enough, and you figure, wow, things really work in here. Um, <clears throat> and so I wanted to give uh, the audience the same experience. And then, you know, of course, then characters emerge eventually. Um, but I really trusted that the narrative would emerge out of the film scenes. And thank God it worked, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. it doesn't, but th this time, you know. And how did you, so I imagine that because, you know, even if you were scouting and you were there for a while before, I think you'd said you, you were there for several weeks, um, you were there for how long were you, was this? Six shoot? weeks. Six we, weeks. Yeah, six weeks. But then you couldn't, you know, decide who these women were before because they were coming in to have a baby. So how did you choose who to follow? And Well, um, yeah, I, uh, so to make life harder, of course, um, as if it weren't already, I decided to really focus in on the mothers instead of the staff the nurses and the caregivers, because I thought they were really just interesting. It, they, I, I don't know, I was very drawn to them. So basically we started shooting and then, but by then I had spent a month in the hospital before shooting, really getting to know the staff and the nurses and explaining to them what it was I wanted to do. And so by the time we started shooting, they knew exactly, I mean, they were sort of on my side and were my embedded producers, I call them. And they would, um, they knew what I was looking for. So they would say, oh, there's this real teenage mother who just came in, or um, there's Lerma, the older woman, but the older, Lerma found us, basically. <laughs> she chose us, you know, there are always those who will choose you. I mean, so Lerma was special. And then this, uh, and Leah, you know, and Leah, I followed her from the very beginning because I saw the labor nurse. And I wouldn't have known this if I didn't spend time there, I saw the labor nurse in Ward 4 with a baby, so I knew that she was looking for the mother, and that would be the first time the mother would see the baby up in the ward. So that's how, but I wouldn't have known that, right? So that's how we followed that first story, and then after that, it's a constant um, uh, sort of trying to explain to the mothers what it was I was trying to do. They would say yes, and then didn't really understand what that meant, the camera always in there, you know, forever. Uh, for six weeks in their faces, you know, and so it, it was a constant conversation What was very important to me was that and one of the very first conversations we had was um, Because there's a disparity in the power right a power imbalance there the power dynamic I had to explain to them that they could say no to me and still be given care in the hospital that I wasn't part of the hospital bureaucracy Right, so that was very important so they could say no, and a lot, a lot of women said no, mm. and a few women did, and we only needed a few. So. You only needed a few, and you got some great ones, definitely, yeah. yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, right there, thank you. The, the lady joked about adoption. How, what's the percentage of the mothers who actually go home with no food and no way to care for their children and actually do keep them up for adoption? Uh, yeah, th that last joke, that was like said jokingly, right? But know, in the right. six weeks that we were there, and um, from talking to the nurses, very few give them up for adoption. Um, there are those, though, that abandon their babies. So there, there were not when we were there. Uh, there was one abandoned baby when we were there, but usually th then those babies are given up for adoption. Yeah. And if I just make sure. sure. Yeah. They look like they were struggling. Is there a way to help these people? Is there a fund? Um, a lot of uh, uh, <coughs> people help through the hospital. Mm -hmm. 
So they donate either goods or, um, or money through the hospital. Uh, that, that's how the help is extended to them. But really, the help is, um, for me, more structural, right? That what's really needed is education. Yeah. And that's a bigger and more complex problem to save because uh, I feel like we can save individuals for uh, however long, right? And how long will that money last? But it's really the system and the culture that needs to shift and that behavioral change, which takes, as you know, like generations, like another generation maybe, hopefully. But with this film, I'm hoping that we get the conversation started. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Yeah, that's a very I was also really um, struck by the um, the way that the nurses um, held the conversations about family planning and birth control, and it seems to me that um, they were always really kind. They were professional but kind, and that really touched me that it was they weren't speaking down to these women. They were, didn't seem judgmental, but it also seemed like there probably is some sort of a line between how how far they can go. Talk a little bit about that. Well, it is a fine line. They they can't coerce. Will have a problem with that because um, they will see the nurses as coercing, but I don't think so. They did. It's a it's a fine line, but I understand where they're coming from because they see these women every year coming. You know. I didn't feel like it was. I didn't feel like it was coercive. I think it was right up to the line, right? Yeah, to the but line, I mean, yeah. they were up showing the opportunities, but then also saying like, "Oh, really? You don't want to do this?" You know, it was very it's human. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Does anyone else have a question? Over here. Oh yes, thank you, and then I'll go to you over there. Yes. Yeah, right. But um, like, say, um, uh, the first woman, Miriam with the money, she's 26 and has had six kids. So to that woman, they offer a legation. She decided not to do it because she would have stayed over the weekend and she just didn't want to deal with it. And so she left, right? But that, there, it's like six so kids, 26. Kids. Yeah, but there's no set, like, rule. It's just, you know, judgment, right? Thank you. And yes, there is someone oh, yes, right here in the middle. Uh, were there any moments where you uh, felt like, where you had to separate yourself from the filmmaker and, um, I don't know, did you feel like you had to step in at any point or? Um, always. I mean, right, that's always an ethical problem, I think, of documentary filmmakers. But you have to draw that line, because then once you step in, it becomes a different film. It becomes um, uh, something totally different. So. It's like a journalist. You, you always have to be a step apart. Although, uh, of course, everything that's happening around you is very intense and very emotional. I mean, um, like, for example, when, when they had no money to go home. Yeah. You know, I'm, I totally understand. I get it. Um, but I, I just... No, yeah. it's tough, right? Yeah. Because you can't offer them money because then it becomes a transactional relationship mm -hmm. wherein they feel they are going to have to perform for you mm -hmm. for this money. Then it becomes completely a different animal. So uh, it's tough. Again, that's not to say that that's a filmmaker, right? That's not to say that after the filming's done, like we didn't do it through my producers or something like that, mm -hmm. which I wanted to be a separate thing, not while we were filming with them, because uh, yeah, I just didn't want to make it like a payment to perform, because mm -hmm. then they would have felt like they needed to perform. Because I always give them the um, a way out. I always say, if you change your mind, which I hope you don't, because you know. The, the film rests on you now, 15 days later. Um, um, I hope you don't, but you can get, tell me when you don't feel like being filmed that day. <clears throat> or like in this morning, you're really not up to it. Just let us know. Don't hide from us. Don't, uh, don't be, you know, just tell us and we won't film you that morning. But what happens in these situations is they get used to the attention. So once we turn away our camera and then they say, then they see we're filming someone else. They're like, no, 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 we're ready. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm like, okay, are you sure you're good? Because, you know, I will come back. You know, don't worry. That's fine. I'm fine. So that's what happens. They get used to the attention, too. Um, yeah. What, 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 oh, oh, I did answer the question. I forget. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 You did. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry okay. if I can't see. Yes, back there. Yes. I'm just curious how you got the approval to film for six. I actually um, went all the way up to the Minister of Health 
And yeah, I and to convince him, and he's very, uh, he's a very, he, he's no longer the Minister of Health, but he, he's a very progressive guy, and he understood, you know, what it was I was trying to do, and I did pitch to him, you know, reproductive health, reproductive justice, and wanting to show what was happening on the ground, and so he was all for that and gave me permission. Fabelia has been covered by other media before, CNN, the BBC, they've all done photo essays on it, so... They probably, they helicopter in for like one or two days. So they're, they're used to media, but there never has there been like um, a, a crew that's wanted to stay for six weeks. So that's what I needed to keep and convince them um, and, and make them understand why it was important to stay for six weeks. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your questions. I just had a question about have the, um, have the women seen the film, the women that are in the film? No, we because we're going to show it later in the year right. to the Fabella um, Hospital staff, and we found Leia who still lives with her mom, uh, with her sister, but we haven't found Lerma and Ira after the filming because you, you know will? the trench there, there's oh, right, there are squatters, yeah, there's squatters, yeah, yes, uh, their their mobile phones don't work and everything, but my film producer is very confident that he'll find them, so. I said, Lerma, we probably will find somehow. Yeah, I think you'll hear her. Yeah, somewhere. we'll hear her somewhere. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I rest more. Yeah, we'll find them. I'm open. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. Anyone have one last question we have time for? Yes. 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 Uh, I was wondering, how do you manage to get funding for a movie project, for a film project like that? How do I manage to get funding? Um, this is funding funded by uh, Sundance, um, Catapult, Chicken and Egg and uh, ITBS, which is a corporation for public broadcasting, PBS in the US. So this is actually gonna be broadcast on public television as is. Soon, Can right? you imagine? On the 16th Yeah, or but they didn't censor there, anything. Really? The breasts and everything, everything will be seen. Oh, that's they're fantastic. They're just gonna put a card in the beginning, which is new for PBS. Yeah. But they're gonna get... Uh, they'll get gonna, some mail. Yeah, they'll get some <laughs> mail. They're ready for it. But to answer your question, this isn't my first film. So, um, I, you know, there's some funders who sort of trust them to come up with something. Uh, it's never easy, it's not easy, but um, when I pivoted to this film, they said, okay, it sounds great. You know, they didn't really know, because, you know, usually they ask you, who are your characters? I'm like, the women there. I don't know who, but you know, there's gonna be a story in there, it's obvious to me. Oh, yeah. So they, you know, it's just a leap of faith on their part, and, but also I've delivered for them before, you know. Okay, yep, sure, one more. So the crew was just me, and this was a condition of access. Only two of us could be in the ward at any given point. Um, so it was me and my DP, and I did sound. Uh, and I haven't done sound since grad school, so that was very challenging. And of course, the first day we realized we couldn't wire the women. We couldn't put like wireless mics in them because they only had hospital gowns, and where do you put the transmitter and all that? So you realize that on the first day, you're like, oh my god. It's a simple thing, but something you don't think about. So I had to boom. The entire time, yeah. Thank God for subtitles, right? So, um, and I had a field producer who took care of all the releases because all those people, all the women, staff, everyone in the hospital signed off on a release. Mm -hmm. And then we put um, a signs up in the hallways that there's a documentary film being um, filming here. And uh, by being here, you're giving consent. If you don't give consent, please talk to management. So that's how we got ourselves covered legally. Because I really have to cross my T's and dot my I's if it's going to be a public television in the U.S. They want, they want to see all those um, releases to get errors in emission insurance. You can't get ENO insurance without all those releases. So, so I want, yeah, my field producer, that was all he did. Yeah. We were lucky because there were big windows, you know. But I don't know if you guys noticed that in the middle of the... I shouldn't probably tell you, but in the middle of the film, they changed the curtains. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? Oh, you yeah. did? From oh, pink to blue. Oh. Yeah. We're like, oh my God. And they I didn't, didn't tell us. Yeah. Oh, good. I didn't because if they would have told us, we would have filmed it, right? Then. Right. Yeah. So my editor was not happy. But. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do your editing on the job, or did you do lots of editing 
Afterwards. After. Oh, thank you. I'll tell my editor that. Um, after. Yeah, after. She's been working with the same editor for all of her films. We were yeah. just talking about the process. It's pretty. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for thank staying. You.